they've been aware that the, the cortege has been followed by a helicopter throughout most of the day and they've heard the helicopter in the sky so the people here are aware that the Queen is getting closer. We talked what about 20 minutes ago and the Queen's uh, cortege had at that point crossed the Queensferry Bridge and you crossing over the Firth of Forth which leads you from the Kingdom of Fife as it used to be known uh, across the water into the environs of Edinburgh itself. From the edge of the city it's not that far away. We can hear the sirens now. We've heard the soldiers being called to attention at Holyrood Palace, just across over to my left. Uh, and you can hear the siren, which would suggest, given that the roads around here are closed, it would suggest that the cortege is getting closer. If you look down, that is the bottom of the Royal Mile. The building uh, to your left now is the Scottish Parliament. And you see the fluorescent vests of the volunteers, but also of the police who are here on duty to keep an eye on the crowds. Crowds which have swollen in number quite considerably over the last few hours. People were here from very early this morning, two-year-olds bringing bouquets of uh, flowers, including and people who are much older than that coming to, to pay their respects to really the only monarch they'd ever known in the United Kingdom. So people are here and it may just be a, a fleeting glimpse, but they will get a chance uh, to spend longer saying their goodbyes when the Queen's body is taken from here at Holyrood on Monday in a procession which will be led by King Charles. It will go to St Giles Cathedral, which is about halfway up the road known as the Royal Mile. And there, uh, the Queen's body will lie at rest uh, until Tuesday when it will be taken uh, to the airport at Edinburgh and flown to RAF Northolt in North London and then on to Buckingham Palace. So this, uh, a huge moment uh, in the final journey of the Queen. It's, it's going to be a long journey. It'll take over several days. But clearly, this is going to give the chance of the people of Scotland to say farewell to, as, as Tom Devine was explaining, a, a monarch that, that held a special place in the heart heart of the Scottish people. I'm just going to turn around now and we can see the flashing lights and there it is, the cortege and the coffin of Queen Elizabeth. And Alan, we can Cheers from the crowd hear there. that atmosphere Applause in the background indeed. for the indeed. Queen for her long service of 70 years. You can hear the applause uh, from the crowd uh, marking the Queen's 70 years of service and the Queen who spent summers uh, at Holyrood, uh, returning home for one final time to the place in Scotland that was her official residence, essentially her Buckingham Palace here in Scotland. Through the fence, and it, it's hard to see with the camera because there are so many fences, I can see soldiers moving into place and they uh, will bear the weight of the coffin and the Queen and lift the coffin into Holyrood. And just outside, I can see a number of members of staff who have been with the Queen for a number of years who are there ready to welcome her home. The car now pulling in to the courtyard at Holyrood here at the foot of the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. The car has been accompanied throughout its long journey by the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, uh, the Queen's only daughter who also has a very special place in the affections of the Scots. She is, in fact, the patron of the Scottish Rugby Union and attends every home game that Scotland play when it comes to playing the sport. Let's just take a second for a moment to hear as the Queen makes her final, final arrival back at Holyrood. Soldiers moving into place are from the Royal Regiment of Scotland. All in their dress uniform for this occasion, all wearing white gloves. And many of them would have stood on guard duty at Holyrood while the Queen was here.
the journey undertaken by the Queen. She's gone from Balmoral and headed north to Aberdeen. Then from there, down through the east coast of the country to Dundee, to Perth, and finally home to Holyrood Palace. One of the first visits the Queen made in 1952 on becoming the monarch succeeding her father was to come here to Scotland, to stay at Holyrood, to visit the people of Scotland. In 1953, she attended a service of thanksgiving at St Giles Cathedral, the place where her body will lie at peace on Tuesday for the people of Scotland to say their farewells. And slowly, with great care and with great affection, the colour party, as they are known, bear the body of the Queen to be taken to the throne room in Holyrood, where her coffin will rest overnight, and then on Monday, with her son, the new king, at the head of the procession, it will be taken to St Giles Cathedral. The hearse just moving away from the front door. So it's fair to say, after leaving Balmoral several hours ago, the Queen is home in Holyrood. As you say, at the end of a long journey there, something like six hours by road from Balmoral to the palace in Edinburgh, 175 miles or 280 kilometres approximately by road, as I say. It went to Aberdeen in the east coast, downwards towards Dundee, across to Perth, before it went to Edinburgh. We're going to have a listen in to more of this pomp and ceremony. It's interesting that many of the people who've been gathered here for so long have decided to stand. They're not leaving, they're not walking away. For them, this moment isn't over. They want to be with people. And as Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, said, it gives people the opportunity to say a collective farewell to a woman who was respected, who was admired who was liked by the Scots, and let's face it, the Scots don't tend to like everyone, uh, but they had a special place of affection for the Queen. And if we just move to the side here, you will see the guardsmen who have been on duty here for the Queen leaving Holyrood, led by uh, the drum major at the head of the line one drum playing so that everyone keeps in the same beat and followed by soldiers from the Royal Regiment of Scotland.
connection between the Queen and the regiment goes back some time. She is their commander-in-chief, essentially their honorary head. And as I say, many of these soldiers would have stood on guard when the Queen visited Scotland. The last time she came to perform official duties was back in 2021, when she visited a soft drinks factory. Scotland has its own particular best-selling brand of soft drinks, more than the usual names that you would associate. And that endeared her even more to the people of Scotland, that she would take time to visit such a place, the new opening. And so after six and a half hours, the Queen has left the place that she loved most in Scotland, Balmoral, where she spent many happy summers, to come to the place where it was her official home, the place where she performed her official duties, her official residence in Scotland, Holyrood. And as you can still hear, the bands and the soldiers marching off away to my left, having seen Queen Elizabeth home.